Hey guys, Dr. Ben here, Functional Medicine Society. It is excited to have you on. Thanks for jumping on. We're going to talk today about blood sugar, talk about averages of blood sugar, and all the things that you need to know uh, to determine whether you have a good blood sugar optimization or not. So, what are we looking at? Well, there's multiple things that you need to look for when you're thinking about blood sugar. Hemoglobin A1C is one of the most common that we see uh, that people are thinking about when they think about blood sugar. A1C is the average of the last three months of your blood sugar. So here's the thing. Traditionally, A1C tells us whether you have diabetes or not. So uh, give me a thumbs up. Anybody out there have had their A1C tested and let me know what that is and we'll give you an idea if that's a good range or not. So A1C is the average of the last three months of somebody's blood sugar. Pretty, pretty amazing that we can actually see those things, um, but it's basically how those red blood cells age over the last three months. So what are we looking at? Well, uh, an A1C of 5.7 or above is going to be pre-diabetic. 5.9, 6, somewhere in that range and above, they're averaging in the diabetic range. Um, but that's not the whole story. 5'1", 5 5'2", 5 5 is a really good average, uh, about 100 or so. Uh, but then anything under 5.0 is going to be a hypoglycemic average. So some people are actually averaging low. So here's what happens. I posted earlier a, uh, a picture of a blood work where someone had an average of 5.0, which is, in theory, really far away from diabetes. And so people go, oh good, your blood sugar's fine, you're not diabetic. But think about it this way. If somebody has blood, blood pressure that's okay, but their blood pressure isn't high, but it's actually low, what does that feel like? Well, that's not much fun either, to have low blood pressure, to have uh, low heart rate, a lot of these things. There's a sweet spot for everything. And there's a sweet spot for blood sugar. And that's the problem that we're seeing here, is that a lot of people, even though their average is okay, and their doc will say, oh, they're not, uh, they're not diabetic, so your blood sugar is fine, that is not the whole story. So what we have to look at is, there's a range. So if you took statistics, uh, remember, I can't remember which one it was, I always forget, but it's the mean, median, or mode. One of those tells us how wide that range actually is. So for us, we want a nice, consistent 85 to 110 on your glucose all day long. That's where we want it to be. But what happens is people will spike up and they'll drop down and they'll have these swings, but that average is totally fine. So this patient that I, I put that blood work up, 5.0 A1C, actually averaging a little bit low, but her insulin was over 200. You know how many times I'll see somebody's insulin over 200 this year? Maybe five total out of thousands and thousands of blood work that we run all over the country at our different offices. But we might see five people total that have over this 200 insulin, meaning that this blood sugar is spiking up and it's saying, oh my gosh, bring it down. You gotta bring that glucose down. And so then they're putting out more insulin. We like it about 10. If somebody's eating, we like insulin around 10 and she's over 200. And yet her blood sugar is perfect on the average if anything, even a little bit on the low side. So what's happening? She spikes up, the body says, oh my gosh, get this down, you gotta pull it down. So then that blood sugar crashes, and then it says, oh, we're crashing, we're down in the 30s, 40s, 50s, which we see all the time in people, and they're feeling tired, spacey, hangry, uh, they're getting random anxiety where the body just going into this tremor state, the adrenals are being triggered, all these things, so it crashes down, and then they eat something, and they go, in the cubicles world, they got, you know, somebody's got a dish of Hershey's Kisses, and they're popping Hershey's Kisses, or they get a Red Bull, or a Monster, or whatever it is, and phew, they shoot up again, and then the body kicks out insulin, and then pulls it down, and they're doing this again and again and again. And this yo-yo is horrible. Hey, Eric, good to see you. Guys, uh, pop on where you're watching from. Love to see everybody all over the country. I know we're a little bit earlier. Uh, we're starting our office hours an hour earlier for the summer, uh, so uh, I'm gonna be getting on earlier for everybody in Mountain Standard Time, um, definitely earlier than we have been in California. Sorry, guys, I'm even in the six-something range over there, but. Uh, um, pop where you're where you're watching from. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you guys have had your A1C tested and what that what that is doing. Uh, so 
uh, I'll tell you where you are and what you might need to do to be able to get that, that blood sugar stabilized. So remember, just having an okay A1C, that A1C is in the good range, um, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, that is not the whole story. We have to look at many other factors, insulin, glucose, fatty liver, triglycerides, all these things, and someone may be spiking up and crashing down dramatically. I see people over 100 points a day, they're swinging all over the place. So when you get your blood work done, make sure you do insulin, make sure you do uh, GGT, you do ferritin, triglycerides, all these different markers to see what that blood sugar is doing, and then that's why we use the glucose monitoring to really figure out and get people stabilized exactly where they need to be. So. Great having you guys on. If you got any questions about blood sugar, about A1C, about what any of this means, pop that down below. Uh, love seeing you guys on here, and we'll talk soon, everybody. Take care.